I was browsing Reddit the other day and I saw someone had posted the poster to the new John Boyega movie. So I had a look at it and just sort of stared at it for a while. It's terrible. Just absolutely terrible. I mean, there's a host of things that are bad from a technical standpoint. For example, that the title is lowercase or that John Boyega isn't casting a shadow on this guy. But that really isn't the main problem. The main problem is that this doesn't speak to me. I have no idea what this movie is about. Is it a thriller? Is it a murder mystery? Maybe a heist film? The only thing that raises my interest somewhat is the katana. It feels out of place and that's what makes it interesting. It makes you wonder how it fits into this crew. But in general, a very bad poster. And I've noticed this theme of very bad posters in recent years, maybe 10 years, uh, used to advertise movies and I think that's a real shame because posters, when done right, can be an artwork in and of themselves. But that immediately poses the question though, what makes a good poster? In my opinion, there are a few things a poster must achieve to be labeled a quote-unquote good poster. The first thing a poster must get right is also the main reason why it exists, to advertise the movie. For this to work, the poster needs to tell us exactly what type of movie it is and what that movie is about. Something like Star Wars loses no time in doing this. Similarly, if the movie is a rom-com, the poster should use design language reminiscent of rom-coms to reflect that to the viewers. That being said, rom-com posters are amongst the most boring ones out there. It wouldn't hurt to come up with a new idea. Viewers should know what kind of ride they're in for when they see a poster. A poster that communicates excellently what kind of story it is, is Stranger Things. Set in the 1980s, Stranger Things weaponizes nostalgia throughout the series. From comic books, to music, to fashion, nothing is immune to nostalgia. The poster designers play this to their advantage and design a poster that is highly reminiscent of actual 80s posters in terms of composition and actually being an illustration as opposed to being a Photoshop collage. I believe the reason many posters nowadays are so uninspired is because studios want to play it safe. They don't like taking risks, so they create posters that look identical to dozens of other posters. This leads to a very bland poster landscape, but it doesn't have to be this way. Posters, nowadays more than ever, are losing relevance. Most people decide to watch a movie after having seen the trailer. When is the last time you decided to watch a movie solely based on seeing the poster? And since everyone has a little screen to watch trailers on in their pocket, not too many people even care about the poster anymore. Instead of now investing no more money into posters, however, I believe studios should see this as an opportunity. They now have the possibility to create a real artwork that shares the theme of the movie. Since a movie's financial success is no longer based off of the poster, studios should encourage designers to experiment and try out more radical ideas. No one talks about a bad poster, but a really good poster will still get people talking. In that sense, the studio really risks nothing by commissioning a more radical poster. Either it's bad, and no one talks about it, or they create a great poster that does indeed get people talking, which in turn hopefully generates more sales for the studio. In that sense, I believe it would be in the studio's best interest to make interesting posters. But then again, expecting Hollywood to innovate is foolish, isn't it? So then, let's talk about some great modern posters, because they do exist. The first one I would like to show is Blade Runner 2049, a movie that I adore. I love the super saturated colors in this poster, and I feel the composition also works, although it is a bit generic. The only reason I like this poster though, is because it captures the look of the actual movie perfectly, as an image. If something like Saving Private Ryan had such strong colors, I'd be disappointed. But Blade Runner 2049 rolls with this entire saturated aesthetic all throughout the movie, and it works beautifully in this poster as well. I also really like the Parasite poster. This poster is real art. It's great because there's so much to see. The longer you look at it, the more questions you have, like, who do these legs belong to? Is it a corpse? And if so, why does no one care? And why are all the eyes blacked out? What's up with the teepee and the reflection? And check out that little kid next to it. 
The only thing I dislike about this poster is the extra text. I'd rather they just leave it out. Aside from that, this poster creates an atmosphere. It just unnerves the viewer and I think it is brilliant for it. Another poster I like very much is this Baby Driver poster. I might be biased towards Baby Driver because it is one of my favorite movies. What I like a lot about this poster is that it incorporates all three main elements of the movie and merges them into one poster. You've got action, cars, and it's all motivated by Baby's music. Though, once again, I'd rather they leave the actors' names away as well. I just think it looks better if they had that negative space to play with. I think it would make for a more interesting poster. Then again, I also understand that the actors want their names on the poster, so you might have to find a compromise there. The other Baby Driver poster is actually also really nice. The last poster I'll mention is this alternative poster to the movie The Post. Uh, it's a movie about the Pentagon Papers with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep. I mean, just look at this thing. Isn't it mesmerizing? It uses the negative space so well and the way Hanks and Streep break up the homogenous pattern of the stairs, it's just beautiful. I love this poster. I could imagine framing it and hanging it up in my room. That's how much I like it. I'd also be remiss if at this point I didn't use this opportunity to at least mention the poster of my last short film. I was very proud of this poster. I thought it was interesting from an artistic point of view and tied in well with the actual short film. Click the card in the top right corner if you haven't seen it yet. But what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments. Now back to the poster of Naked Singularity from the beginning of the video. Not only is it bland, boring and uninspired, but they already had a better one. Yes, you heard right. This was the first poster. In my opinion, this is so much more interesting. I like the limited palette and I'm a sucker for illustrated posters. But not only is it artistically superior, in my opinion, it also makes it clear this is a heist film. Nice. Great success. So why? Just why go from this to this? Oh, Hollywood. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a shorter video essay than usually, but I still hope you um, learned something or at least found it entertaining. I upload videos every Saturday, so please consider subscribing if this sort of content is something that interests you. And now it's time for you to let me know what are your favorite posters. Leave it in the comments and I hope we can start a discussion uh, from there. And tell me what makes your favorite poster so great. Until then, have a wonderful week, guys. I'll see you next Saturday. Take care.